Hi everyone, I'm Farika. And I'm Matt. And today we're going to describe to you our cloud-based international community effort for reproducible benchmarking of genomic tools. So we all know over time, the cost of next generation sequencing data generation has dropped precipitously. And as that cost has dropped, the number of data sets that are publicly available like RNA sequencing data has exploded. At the same time, uh, there are an increasing number of bioinformatic tools that have been developed to process this data. So one way RNA-seq data can be used is to study different aspects of pre-mRNA processing. So here we used as a case study alternative polydentylation. Uh, just as some background, pre-mRNA is transcribed from genomic DNA, and it has several regions like UTRs, untranslated regions, and then exons and introns that uh, make up the coding region. And there are several key processing steps that are undergone uh, to process the pre-mRNA, namely splicing, the removal of introns and joining of exons, 5 prime end capping, and cleavage and polydentylation, where the pre-mRNA is cleaved and a poly A tail is added. Importantly, a number of these processes are not constitutive, but alternative like alternative polyadenylation, where within the three prime UTR, different polyadenylation signals compete and are chosen. Um, and the site of cleavage and polyadenylation is altered. So importantly, APA, alternative polyadenylation, has downstream consequences for gene expression, where if you shorten or lengthen the three prime UTR, you're adding or removing binding sites from microRNAs or RNA binding proteins that go on to influence um, downstream processing of that transcript. Alternative polydentylation is widespread in diverse organisms where in human, uh, we've found through targeted three prime end sequencing data that determines exactly where the polyadenylation site is that a majority of human transcripts undergo this alternative process. So what does this data look like? Uh, so three prime end sequencing data tells us exactly in the genome where the poly A site was in different conditions. And similarly, we have annotation that tells us where we think the, the different isoforms are. But those three prime end sequencing data sets are rare, not available for many conditions. So uh, the field has tried to use RNA sequencing data from different conditions to both identify the different poly A sites that are used within a single gene and quantify the relative usage of these different poly A sites from RNA-seq directly. So currently there are already a number of published tools that similarly investigates APA from RNA-seq data, each with their own set of strengths and weaknesses. So the question is, how do we pick the best tool for our specific use case? To tackle this question, we came together as a community to kickstart the APA Val project that started off as a hackathon in 2021. We divided our goals into scientific and community. For our scientific goals, we first would like to evaluate APA tools to detect and quantify polyadenylation sites and their differential usage across samples. We would also like to create a basis for informed decisions on which method to pick for which use case. Not only that, in addition to the need for papers that evaluate tools, what we need more is evaluation papers that are themselves reproducible. So we want to define and create a highly automated framework for benchmarking analysis that is reproducible now and in the future where we can easily plug and play different data sets. As for our community goals, we would like to bring together RNA biologists, bioinformaticians, and developers to work together promoting best practices for method development. We focus on a software that is easily accessible reusable and open source so that anybody can contribute to the project. Next, we identified tools to achieve our goals. For a reproducible software, we rely on Docker and Singularity. We also automate the workflow using Nextflow and SnakeMake. 
And finally, tools are benchmarked and visualized on Open eBench. And to dive a little more into each tool, first for reproducibility, we use Docker to package and containerize the tools. We are aware that different tools require different dependencies to be installed, and this can be frustrating when we want to run different tools. With Docker, we're able to create an isolated environment for the tools where we include the operating system, all the dependencies and packages to be installed, and finally, the tool itself. The containerized tool is then uploaded to Docker Hub. And tools can then be pulled from Docker Hub to be ran by users in their local machines as is, without having to worry about downloading dependencies and configuring environments. And right now, all the containerized tools for AppEval are up on the AppEval Docker registry. So these containerized tools are used in the automated workflows in which input BAM and GTF annotation files are taken as inputs for the workflow. The automated workflow written in SnakeMake or NextFlow automatically pre-processes the input files, runs the tool with tasks running in parallel whenever possible, and finally post-processes the output files into bed files. So the whole process from input to output is automated. So far, we've collected the tools. Uh, now we need to collect different data sets for benchmarking. Uh, in doing this, we decided on a few guiding principles to define which data sets were usable. Uh, first, we required that the RNA-seq data was publicly available, and that RNA-seq data had some sort of matching orthogonal data like for example, targeted three prime end sequencing technique. Ideally, the RNA-seq and orthogonal data should have been uh, generated by the same lab. Uh, we also wanted to include data of variable sequencing depth. Uh, and in the end, we included data from around 10 million on the low side to upwards of 150 million reads for RNA-seq. And then we wanted to include various uh, different data set types, including simulation of human cell uh, tissue data, uh, human and mouse cell lines, and primary cells and tissues. And all of this um, we had in mind to include variable data types and sequencing depths to give us some insight into the sensitivity of the different tools uh, and how they perform on different uh, sequencing depths and different biological conditions. So what are we actually evaluating? For APA eval, we've focused on four overall benchmarking tasks or what we call events. Uh, the first of which is identification. How well is that tool simply uh, saying this poly A site exists from the RNA-seq data compared to the orthogonal data? Uh, and we focused on these metrics listed here. Next, how well is that tool quantifying uh, alternative polydentylation within a single condition? Uh, so that includes both the absolute usage of each uh, polydentylation site and the relative usage between poly A sites within the same gene. Next, we focused on differential usage between different conditions, so tissue A and tissue B, which poly A sites are changing. And finally, uh, we focus on different compute resources, including maximum memory consumption and um, CPU hours. So in the original 2021 hackathon, we had uh, resources provided by uh, credits sponsored by AWS. Uh, so that allowed us to store the data, download it and process it through uh, NextFlow Tower in collaboration with Sakara Labs. So those credits have since run out, um, but this was a way for a number of people in the community to uh, work on the data and process it in the cloud. Putting all the different sections that we talked about together, we came up with the APA Val workflow framework. Our framework starts off with 
bed and FASTQ raw input files that are processed to generate BAM files. The BAM files and GTF annotation file are APIVAL standardized input files that are a fixed file format for all the tools. And these input files are then fed through the automated method workflow for each tool. The output file format for all the workflows is a bed file that together with a ground truth raw input file are fed to the benchmarking events to be compared against. Here, multiple metrics are used to evaluate each tool and the tools are then benchmarked and visualized on Open eBench. This workflow ensures reproducibility of the benchmarking events. With this workflow, if we were to add a new tool to the method workflow, which is bound to happen because new tools are constantly being published, we wouldn't need to worry about manually rerunning all the other tools again to get a new benchmarking result. Instead, the framework allows us to create the automated workflow just for that tool to be added and then benchmarking will be automatically taken care of with low overhead. Now, since we have our framework, the next step is to curate all API tools to be tested and included in our framework for benchmarking. We found 17 published tools that perform three tasks of identification and quantification of APA sites and calculation of APA site differential expression and any combination of these. After testing, we were left with 11 tools that we included in our framework. Looking more into the workability of the 17 tools we tested, we first looked at whether the tools are actively maintained. We found that only around half are actively maintained. And while testing, we also found that less than half of the tools are bug-free. The bugs we found were reported and some were addressed. And finally, out of the 17 tools tested, we ended up with 11 working tools that are currently automated, containerized, and documented, while the rest are either discarded or blocked. Okay, so now uh, let's look at some preliminary results to give you a flavor of what the output and visualization looks like within Open ePench. So uh, as you know, we're comparing the output of the tools with the corresponding ground truth. So here we're comparing for one uh, specific set of B cells, one replicate. How well is a method plus that RNA-seq data correlating with the ground truth three prime end sequencing data? And we have a plot generated here that compares how well those data sets are correlating versus how many poly A sites are we missing um, compared to the ground truth. So this is just one data set. There are many different data sets and uh, other tools that are included. So as part of the output visualization, we have tables like this. So you can easily compare multiple uh, biological conditions and the long list of potential tools. Uh, so here in these three data sets, these three tools all performed you know, similarly between the different data sets. Uh, but for other data sets, we did see and we're expecting to see even more that this ranking will change depending on the different data sets um, based on sequencing depth and also biological conditions. Um, you know, the different data sets include different um, types of APA and some tools handle those different types better than others. So um, you know, this is an informative way to look at the data, we believe. So with that, we'd like to thank all the contributors that contributed to this project over the past year uh, from all over the world. And we'd also like to uh, thank the advising P PIs, Yosef and Mihaela, who uh, guided us through this project. And just the full list of acknowledgements. Um, we'd like to thank everyone who gave us support over this project. And we'd also invite you to come see our poster, number 1075, uh, in person, so we could talk about this uh, further. So thank you for your time, and we look forward to hearing your questions.